This episode of What The Tech is brought to you by Simple Contacts, an easy and convenient way to renew your contact lens prescription or reorder your contacts from anywhere within minutes. Get $30 off your contact lenses by visiting simplecontacts.com slash Andrew and entering the promo code Andrew. RX Bar is a whole fruit protein bar with no BS. Get 25% off your first order by going to rxbar.com slash Andrew and using the promo code Andrew. That's rxbar.com slash Andrew. Promo code Andrew. What's up, hey? Everybody, welcome to What the Tech. I'm Major Zarin. Of course, I'm joined by the one, the only, Mr. Paul Therod. How you doing, Paul? Pretty good. That was a uh, another bizarre way we started the show. Um, Suncast is still uh, not around, so we're doing right. things a little bit different than the way that we're starting. It's like a homeless person. Though. I know. Yeah, I know. It, it's terrible. It's the it worst. Might be his true calling. <laughs> what being a homeless person? Yeah. <laughs> he has no internet. He's he's barely in a house right now. He, he actually sure. had a terrible car accident, too, this week. Oh. Yeah, I'm bad, so really bad. So okay. uh, he's having a real hard time, and uh, he's still he's <laughs> still able to kind of do stuff for us, which is amazing to me, that he's still actually somewhat working. I, right. I would have I would have just crawled up in a cave and said, I'm done. It's over. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, guys, we have so much to talk about. Uh, the Surface Book 2, Paul, yes, you sir. put a, uh, a nice post on the website. I want to talk to you about this thing. A lot of people really are saying that this was a nice little upgrade and the hinge is mm-hmm. so much better. Yeah. So I want yeah. Right? People are very yeah. excited about this, but uh, I do want to talk about this and a whole lot more. Um, Paul, you, you have a, what time do you have to get out of here today? Uh, two o'clock. Two o'clock on the dot. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Two o'clock on the dot it is. Uh, Thank you for to... respecting that. I told Brad today earlier I had to leave at a certain time, and he just uh, waltzed right past that care. time, didn't he? Didn't See, care. I'm very didn't considerate. Care maybe maybe yeah. you should rethink. Yeah, some your people are nice. With Brad. Some people. You know. Maybe you should rethink that relationship with Brad. I told you, I'm a little bit jealous about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a little jealous about this uh, love sure. affair you guys have with each other. I'm having a very difficult time here doing what I'm trying to do, but I don't know why. You know, you know what's great when on the Mac Pages refuses to open up your file because you, like a dummy, did not install Outlook, uh, did not install Office. But regardless, we do have a lot to talk about. But before we continue, I do want to take a moment and talk about our new sponsor, and that's Simple Contacts. Paul, do you wear contact lenses? I do. Okay, so do I. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure many of our audience members wear con- wear contact lenses. I, the worst part of me buying contacts is the fact that. I never buy a tremendous amount of contact lenses. Like I always buy, buy buy you buy a lot. Okay. So what I do is I buy like six months worth and I hope it'll last me a while. And then by the time that I need a contact lens, it's such a pain in the butt to go back to the eye doctor and to get this thing redone, right? You got to always get, get the, the, the eye exam and they got to go through all that. It's never just cut and dry and buying a contact lens. Uh, because you can't just buy it over the counter. But Simple Contacts has the closest thing to making this as simple as ever. If you go to simplecontacts.com slash Andrew, you get $30 off your contact lens purchase. You could use the promo code Andrew at checkout. But here's the great thing. You could do your eye exam online now. Hmm. Isn't that unbelievable? I actually went through the process when I was... um, when we signed up for them, I had like just tell us the like the short or the line you can read or whatever. Yeah. So what you do is it's actually uh, amazing, and I really, really recommend you guys try it out. Even if you're not buying a contact lens, go through it because it's actually really cool how they do it. Uh, mm-hmm. It works with your webcam. So you set up your webcam, and they do the redness test. You look up, you look down, you look side to side. Once you pass that, then you do the vision test. So you back up ten feet from your monitor. You actually have to uh, configure the resolution with a credit card. So you put a credit card to your screen and you drag whatever size that credit card is. So it knows what size resolution it's going to be set at. Then you go 10 feet and you read the lines. You submit it. And within, I mean, literally five minutes, I got, you know, they approved it. And I bought my contact lenses and I was done. It is the most painless, easy process i've ever gone through i never have to go to the eye doctor again to buy contact lenses um 
listen, guys, I highly, highly recommend. They have every major brand. They have every type of contact lens you could imagine. Uh, it's a great service that actually makes your life so much easier. All you have to do is go to simplecontacts.com slash Andrew and use the promo code Andrew and you save $30 on your contact lens purchase. You saw you saw the, how that New York thing came in? Dollars. <laughs> Dollars. What a yeah. Water dollars. What a, Simplecontacts.com slash Andrew. I want to thank them for supporting the show. I'm really excited to have them on as an advertiser because this is actually a great service. And about like two years ago, I was like, I wonder if I could finagle my way without going to the eye doctor to get contact lenses. I was trying to find a service like this and I couldn't find it. And now it's here. We're in the future, Paul. It's all that matters. <laughs> We're in the future. Um, why don't we take a moment and talk about the surface uh book too? So you have a post on therot.com. I do. Um how long have you had this thing? Actually, not that long. Um, they had sent one to Brad earlier with the normal, you know, the normal review time frame, and then never, you know, they 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 sort of thought that got had us covered. So how dare they? I know, but um, I only got it yesterday, so I I didn't have time to write a full review. But what I've written up is my first impressions. Uh, but I have extensive experience with the original Surface Book. In fact, it's in many ways kind of still my favorite laptop, right? I mean, it's got a near perfect typing experience, great trackpad. The screen is a great size. Um, this is something about it, you okay. know, despite the issues. So I certainly let's had. go down the mm-hmm. list for the surface book Two. obviously comes in a 13 and a half inch screen and a 15 inch screen. Right. Um, that's, I, I, do you have the 15 inch? No, I got the 13 inch. I really, really wanted the 15, but I, that, but Brad had gotten that one. So, Okay, so what does Brad think of the screen size? Because remember, this is a detachable screen as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, one of the we had, you know, we saw these devices a month ago, right at um, at the Microsoft event. So, one of the things that's really interesting about that screen is how light it feels when you pull it off the device. It, given its size, you would think this thing would be like a tank, and it's not. It's actually very light. Um, they've also gone to a fanless design for the screen part because remember the guts are in there yeah. for the processor and the RAM and so forth. And uh, there's some battery. And despite all that, it's, you know, it's literally quiet and it um, is super light, you know. Um, beyond the screen size, make sure, yep. I mean, ba- uh, well, no, actually there are a few other things. So the screen size is the big difference. Um the 13 inch version can be had in a dual core i5 model that's the cheapest one the 1499 one but all of the other models and all of the uh, all of the models for this uh, for the 15 inch version is like the newest quad core eighth Re- generation it, core it's i7 it's a real quad core it's not it's it, yeah. and, and you know it, it's it's actually very surprising to me because i have this discussion with people and they automatically assume that every i7 is a quad core and they're not no. especially on the mobile side uh when you buy an i7 and you have a 13-inch device or 14-inch yeah. device, there's a very, very, very high chance prior to this I, generation of Intel devices that yes. uh, it's a dual-core i7. And I only have one ver- uh, one model of any laptop from a mainstream PC maker in, 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 in my head that I know is quad-core from before. H- uh, from before? No, that was a Dell XPS 15. Um, yeah, so 15-inch devices very, that are quad-core. Not always. <laughs> you yeah. know, not always. Um, but yes, it's very unusual. So anyway, but now because of the eighth generation with the quad core stuff, quad core. we're going to see more and more of this. Uh, and that's a big, big change. It is a big change. No, it's seriously. And I, I think this is something that's a little overlooked on what Intel mm-hmm. did. Um, I've always bought 13 inch laptops because I always feel that they're easier to travel with. I would prefer, I mean, this one yeah. is 14 inch and I, this yep. carrying this around compared oh, to best. this yeah. Yep. I mean, it's night and day. This is this is ridiculously yeah. big. Um, and 14 is a great compromise. Um, you know, yeah. 13, 14. So whatever. the only reason why I bought this MacBook is because I needed a quad core. I needed right. a quad core. Right. And now you can get it with the 13 inch devices. So yep. uh, this the pixel, uh, this pixel. Wow. Why do I keep saying the pixel? <laughs> the Surface Book 2, uh, 13 and a half and 15 inch. They both come in quad core, but you have a dual core option with the 13 inch that's right okay um how's the battery life no idea (laughs) (laughs) so um microsoft gives some pretty big numbers uh i know 17 hours right vast of experience that that's never been the case um that is one thing i'll be testing for sure yeah i'm curious about the battery life um as far as functionality because i know that the surface book original surface book had 
a lot of issues. You know, there were firmware yep. updates. Yep. Um, has this been, have some of these issues been resolved or all these issues been resolved? Yeah, it's kind of a tough call. I, uh, or that you just today, haven't experienced the problem. Well, I mean, with this one, I have, I can't say I just got it, but over time, I think it's fair to say that the experience on the existing surface book, surface book and surface book with performance space, uh, did get better. Um, I don't know that they were ever able to completely get around it. I mean, it was some really endemic issues, um, going on there, but you know, this is a brand new chipset, um, cabby like, which was the previous gen chipset between the chipset and the new one and the one in the old one, right? Because remember they kind of skipped a generation in a way, although not to destroy this conversation completely, but that dual core option is in fact a cabby lake, which is kind of weird, but whatever. Um, they Intel and Microsoft both, I think, got ahead of the, you know, the unreliability stuff. So, uh, you know, we have hopes <laughs> here. So, um, you know, we'll see. But I, I mean, I had basically been advising Microsoft uh, and anyone who would listen for the past year or more, like to switch to the new gen like that, that would solve the problem, I think. Um, so this is even better because they've switched to an even newer version of the chipset, much better um, performance on the CPU. Mm -hmm. with the quad core thing and then uh dedicated gpus on all of the i7 versions which in the case of the 13 inches of um, nvidia 1050 with two gigs of ram in the case of the 15 inches an nvidia 1060 with six gigs of ram uh, both of those qualify for pc gaming i mean both of those will be great gaming machines as well uh you know 1080p ish 10 uh, 1080p style uh, pc gaming but um these are really you know these are what they always promised with Surface Book, but didn't quite deliver in the past. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 exciting to see them doing it. It is exciting. Um, pricing is the same, right? It's about. I believe same. so. It's so fourteen ninety nine is the base price. Um, I think the you know the, the machine Brad has is probably thirty three hundred dollars. You know it's expensive. Um, but it's interesting to compare these to say dedicated gaming machines, which are typically as expensive and much bulkier more plasticky, you know, kind of go racer, boy racer style, you know, how gaming PCs can be kind of chintzy looking or whatever. Uh, it doesn't look like that, right? It's really professional looking and beautiful. It's and it's a great work a day kind of laptop. And then you can go home at night and play video games on it. I mean, yeah, that's it's amazing. classic. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's pretty cool. I'm curious to see how this thing sells and, um, yeah. <laughs> are people going to buy it after, after, you know, the issues with the surface book originally? Yeah, well, it look, I mean, I, I love this thing, and I've been very realistic about it over the past, you know, year and a half, two years, whatever it is. Um, I will very much be keeping my eye on any issues, you know, blue screens, uh, weird behavior. You come in and it's hissing or it's really hot and it's you close the lid and it didn't shut down or whatever. So um, I just got it. I haven't experienced anything yet. That means nothing. So we've got to give it some time. Um. So uh, there was an interesting, uh, actually, also on the Therat site, the mm -hmm. Therat site, uh, you mm -hmm. had mm -hmm. uh, a little review of the the mouse that Microsoft, yeah. Microsoft released. Did you did you like it? Yeah, I do like it. Um, my only, well, two things. I mean, for me personally, the only issue is the price. It's ninety nine dollars, which I think is really expensive for a mouse. Um, it's also a right hand only mouse. So if you're lefty, you know, you're kind of out of luck. I, I assume. Left-handers are a little bit used to that. That's yeah, very standard. I don't know. I don't know any lefties that use a left-handed mouse. I'm a lefty. Yeah. Well, I think you pretty much get. You can have a like a ambidextrous mouse that's kind of you know looks is is not right-handed, or you can have a right-handed mouse. I mean, I think those are usually the two choices. But but this is a this is a really nice mouse. It's Bluetooth and USB, so you can actually plug in a cable oh, if you nice. want to use it wired. That will give you better performance if you're gaming like on a Surface you know uh, Surface yeah. Book or whatever. It, it can actually connect with up to three PCs, and I assume four if you use the wire on the fourth. I haven't tried it, you know, that much, but um, I find that to be very interesting. I've never seen a mouse like that before. We see some mobile keyboards that support multiple devices, but uh, that's kind of handy. Bunch of programmable buttons, um, but the thing I like the most about it, aside from just the general feel of it, is it really feels nice in your hand, and it's ergonomic enough, I would say. It's not quite as ergonomic as the mouse I usually use, but it's much better than previous mice is there's a little switch on the top of the mouse behind the scroll wheel that kind of switches it between two scroll modes. And so there's the normal scroll mode where you, you, know, you spin the wheel and it's got a very smooth kind of feel. And then there is a, uh, I think they call it detent. 
scroll, which basically scrolls in chunks, uh, very small chunks. And so it gives you a way uh, you can, you, I'm doing it now. It's funny because when, when it's in normal scroll mode, it's almost, it's almost too free. Like it feels like it's just going to go spinning off into space. Uh, and when you switch it, there's like a clunk kind of sound. And then it's like clunk, clunk, clunk as you, as you yeah. scroll. And it's, it's got a, a more precise kind of scroll to it. I, 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 I add up all that stuff. And I, I've just never seen anything quite like this. It's actually, I mean, it's a mouse. I mean, I know that, but it's all this stuff that I just said, especially for Microsoft. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. It's a really nice mouse. I wish it was $69, but, um, you know, if you want to finish off your surface hardware collection, that's not a bad choice. Very cool. Um, I want to take a moment uh, for a second here and bring up the fact that apparently these MacBook pros are selling depending on who you're asking. Mm-hmm. There was a bump, Paul, in uh, MacBook sales. Oh, yeah? A bump. I think they went from 10% market share to 10.4% market share. <laughs> oh, okay. And I really, you know what I was thinking? So, you know, I, I do people watching all the time. I love to see what people are using, what kind of devices they have. If they're Like with yeah. the iPhone, I was shocked. Uh, actually, a lot of people bought this iPhone 10. A lot yeah. of people. Um, I'm curious to see what the numbers will be when they release them. They have not announced any kind of numbers, right? On iPhone 10, no, they have not. Interesting. Actually. That is interesting. I, I find it very yeah. interesting that we have not yeah. gotten an overall iPhone number because uh, they they love to gloat how well these things. do. I've never noticed that. What do you mean? Like, give yeah. me an example yeah, where like, Apple has ever gloated. More. Like they they say, <laughs> oh hey uh, Samsung, f you, you suck. We sold 30 billion phones. You know what? Steve Jobs actually did say that. He said, F you, Samsung. No, he sold exact 30 quote. billion. Yeah. Exact quote. That was at yeah. WWDC, I think, 2010. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, well, he but, was probably dying. Give him some slack. Yeah, um, he got sick. Um, but we haven't really... It, yeah. It's rare for them not to show these numbers, but I've seen a ton of them in the wild. Okay? Tons. I too. Uh, I too. On the train, I was talking to this guy. Um, this guy sat next to me. He had the new iPhone. I said, hey, listen, uh, you mind if I ask you a couple questions? And he said, absolutely. Get the hell away from me. Uh, n- no, well, you he, are in New York. No, I started asking him, you know, about the phone and if the notch bothers him. He doesn't even care about the notch. Doesn't even bother him. He loves the phone. Yeah, well, that's I hear that universally. And a, a neighbor of mine got one, and he let me play with it for a while. And I got to say, it looks in pictures like it would just be horrible. And then you use it, and you're like, actually, it's fine. It's I not mean, that bad. Yeah. yeah. And there's an app actually you could download, and on your home screen, it makes the notch disappear. So it cuts the screen off a little bit, like let's yeah. say like here, and it doesn't show like you know with like you can see like the date and the time, whatever it is, like on the on the corners of the notch. It cuts it off, so there's nothing. Good. So it just looks like a black screen, and it actually looks like a normal person's phone. I don't know if that's the answer. I don't know if that's what people want to do, but um, I've seen a ton of these in the wild. I have yet. To run into, I only know one person that has one of the the new MacBook Pros. One person. Yeah, that's one you actually don't see in the wild. And the weirdest None. thing about it is, you wouldn't actually know if it was the very latest one because they revved it so quick. So they had the one you originally had, which was kind of a disaster. Oh, uh, nightmare! And then they they kind of quietly replaced it with a slightly newer version, but it's the same, you know, same look. You'd never know, you know. There's yeah. no real way to know. Um, is there a way? I I I know. I I could tell. You ask them, listen, hey, does this thing suck? And they say yes. And you go, ah, 2016 model. Yeah, like Sarah, right, yeah. Um, you know what's amazing? So when I got this, my my entire office got brand new MacBook Pros. Mm-hmm. And I was very proactive. And I'm the only one that takes it home. Everybody leaves their computers at work. But I use this all day long. And I was, a, I was the first one. And I was very proactive at trying to figure out what's wrong with this thing. Everybody right. now is starting to get blue screens. Or kernel panics. Sorry. They're all getting kernel panics. The same uh, video card problem, same Intel video card problem, uh, and the and the kid is crying. So that one guy that that's annoyed by it. Listen, I'm gonna right. I'm just gonna give him a minute here. There's nothing I could do. The dog is watching him. It's fine. Um, so they I, I'm shocked to hear that there's a bump in app in MacBook sales, considering I live in New York City. Every Starbucks, every coffee shop has, everybody has a MacBook. I, it's rare for me to see someone without a MacBook. I have yet to see one of these new MacBooks. 
So yeah, who's, that's interesting. I'm curious, you think in New York City you'd see everything. In yeah. New York City, San Francisco. Maybe in San Francisco it's a little different. But I have I only know one guy, and he goes to press all the time, and he bought it because I convinced him that the 2017 model is a good laptop, and he actually loves it. So that's the only person that I know that I've come in contact with every single day. I'm in the city and I'm in uh, I'm everywhere. Nobody else has this thing. I'm actually thinking that bump in sale from 10 to 10 point, you know, 10.4. It was mm -hmm. probably a large purchase. It was probably, oh, you know, yeah. enterprise purchases of these stupid laptops. That's my theory, because I don't think anybody bought it. It's way too expensive. It's way too big. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm shocked. To hear that there's been a bump in MacBook sales. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad, but it sucks. Um, we do have a lot more to talk about, guys. But before we do, I want to take a moment and talk about RX Bar. Talk about being in Manhattan. I go into Manhattan every single day now. And I go to the coffee shop. And I get my coffee. Black, no sugar, no milk, nothing. And I purchase an RX Bar also because they sell them over there. And <laughs> I'm actually, um, I've, I've cut carbs out. Majority of carbs. And I'm uh, eating way healthier than I was over the summer. And I've, I'm down about 12 pounds. And every morning, an RX bar is my breakfast. Every single morning, this is what I'm doing. It's a great way to kickstart a diet. It's a great way to kickstart, you know, just filler. Don't eat garbage. Uh, and the ingredients are right on there. You know there's no garbage in this thing. Uh, it's great for uh, breakfast on the go. It's a great snack to throw in the office. You throw in your bag, and that's it. It's there. They have 11 different flavors, whether you like the sweet or savory stuff or the chocolate or fruit. Um, it's right there, and the ingredients are right on there. So, for example, when you buy it, it says it sh it'll show egg white as the main source of protein, and then it'll list everything else. They're gluten-free, soy-free, dairy-free, no sugar is added. And here's a great thing. You get 25% off your first order by going to rxbar.com slash Andrew. That's rxbar.com slash Andrew, and you could use the promo code Andrew at checkout. I absolutely love RX Bar. Uh, I've been eating it for years, and you should also give it a shot. I want to thank that for supporting the show. Uh, hmm. Paul, so you were doing a little side-by-side -side of um, what game were you playing? Call of Duty. How's that game? One. Is it good? It's awesome. Yeah, eh, I heard it. Eh. <clears throat> well, those people are incorrect. <laughs> no, it, it's a very good game. Uh, so you you were doing a side by side of the um, the new Xbox and the Xbox One S. Yeah, I'm trying to prove my contention that the performance of the hard drive isn't that much better on the 10X, uh, the One X. Sorry, um, but in doing so, it occurred to me, you know, I haven't done enough side by side game testing. This is very time consuming, obviously, but the game that I'm most familiar with is the new Call of Duty, right? That because I've been running this thing in 4K, I did the single player campaign all the way through. I've been playing multiplayer ever since. And then I thought, you know, actually <clears throat> multiplayer games aren't going to run at 4k. Obviously it's a, um, a first person shooter, a lot of stuff going on in the screen. It could change at any time. They're going to be running that thing at a lower resolution. It's possible. And maybe even probable that that game in multiplayer mode will look and work exactly the same on the two consoles. And I thought that'll be kind of an interesting test. And so I, I just threw it up before we started the podcast on the 10, uh, sorry, geez, the Xbox One S, which is the previous version of the console. And uh, no, it does not look the same. It, does not look it looks good. like it looks like garbage. Does it's it like, really? You know, and the, the funny thing is, if I had never seen the 4K version or whatever it is on the 10, geez, why do I keep doing that? On the One X, I don't know that I would have thought it looked bad. But what it what it reminds me of, and this is this is something only Call of Duty fans would maybe understand is. When when Call of Duty Black Ops came out uh, three or four years ago, whatever that was, it was the last version, I think, of the games that they put out on the Xbox 360. And the 360 version was particularly half-hearted. I think in, uh, the original plan was they were going to release it with just whatever multiplayer maps were built in. They were never going to have add-ons, like add-on maps like they did on the Xbox One. And yeah. I got it on that console because I was playing uh, Xbox up the street with these guys uh, every month, and they all had Xbox 360s. And it was just the most awful uh, half-hearted port. And it just looked dull and uh, didn't have any, anywhere close to the same graphic fidelity, even though I felt like it kind of could have. And that's what this reminds me of. It, it's, it probably would have been fine if I had never seen the other one, but having just literally just jumped out of the game and played it again on the other console, it's astonishing how bad it looks on the non-X version of the console. Like it's, it's again, it's not like a cartoon. I mean, it's not like a 
like an Atari or something, but it's it's immediately noticeable, like that's, immediately. That's interesting because you would I yeah. would not have imagined that it would be that noticeable. No, me too. I was surprised by it. Yeah. So I'm going to try to capture that somehow. I, I think uh, I don't have a way of recording 4K video, but I think what I can do is some static shots. And maybe what I'll do is just jump into a um, – a map by myself and take shots at the same location throughout the, you know, the game in both on both consoles and just, I can do like a, you know, a side by side so you can kind of see it. But r really what I was trying to uh, test was the performance. And I kind of had that idea just to look at it. And I was like, geez, this is, um, this is noticeable. I mean, is it worth paying $500 to get a new console? And, you know, it's a tough one. Um, but it's, it's a big difference. It's a big yeah. difference. I'm that's actually uh, very beneficial for a lot of people because I don't think a lot yeah. of people realize that there is going to be a different now you're going to see a quality difference depending on the many the, the 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 developer as well right it's not going to be is this going to be across the board or is this going to be something else <clears throat> well okay so um, technically speaking any game that you play on the Xbox one X will be I'm going to put better in air quotes will be better in some way right and so if the developer doesn't do anything you're supposed to still benefit from higher frame rates, um, from uh, better super sampling and uh, smoothing of video and so forth. It just, it, even if the graphics are the exact same resolution, same display, it should look better, generally speaking, uh, on the X. Um, the game loading times are supposed to be better. My, I don't remember the figure that Microsoft provided on that. I, I certainly am not seeing it like, say, 50% um, disk load speed advantages, nothing like that. But it will be a little faster. Um, and then, of course, the, the benefits go up um, in other ways depending on your situation. So, for example, one thing you can do is even if you don't have uh, a 4K display, you can download the 4K assets for games onto your Xbox One X mm. and use them on a 1080 display, and that will do super sampling. So, actually, you, you're still going to get better quality graphics because of the way the, the, the console handles that. Oh, very interesting. Um, so, so, you can take advantage of that way. Um, and then, of course, developers can very specifically um, take advantage, you know, enhance your game for Xbox One X. In which case, if you're running it on a 4K display, especially, you, you're going to realize all kinds of different benefits. I might have to um, pull my cat out of a plastic bag so she doesn't kill herself. Oh my god, she's doing it. She's <laughs> <laughs> just horribly stupid. I can't believe she's still alive. Is she out? Yeah, she's struggling. She's licking it. Okay. Um, yeah, she's out. You know, we do our we do our Black Friday show every year. I think what we'll do is maybe. Can, are you available on Tuesday to do a show? Let me check. Yes. Oh, because it's Thanksgiving. Yeah, Thursday's Thanksgiving. So I was thinking maybe we would do our Black Friday show on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, I should be. Uh, because every year we do the Black Friday show and we talk about the deals that are available and, and people really enjoy them, which, which we'll definitely do. Uh, and then we'll do a holiday pick one later on. But I was thinking about this from the holiday season last year. Mm -hmm. um, all the tech stuff that I got and that I'm not using and that I am using. I have to tell you, I am not. I mean, the, these these assist the, like the Google Home stuff, the, the Amazon mm -hmm. stuff. I am not sold on the idea that this thing is going to be in everybody's home and this is going to be something that lasts uh over the next so, decade or so as as part of our our automation home i would like to convince you otherwise okay please because i'm <laughs> going to tell you something my google my google home yeah. has not been hooked up for about three months and i don't even want to hook yeah it up. no, I no, no by the way I, I i agree with you that's common um i think that a the amazon echoes of the world the google homes whatever they are um are much like gym equipment people buy them with the best best of you know ideas and uh never really follow through on it like i i that i completely understand but there there are two things that i mean look we talk about this all the time you know we talk about this kind of um this notion that you could be anywhere in the world and talk to something or open any screen and get access to your own stuff and, and that the computing will be kind of pervasive, right? And so the, the two things that I think are going to happen that will make that happen are A, uh, the cost of the device is going down and then over time, this technology just being embedded into everything, you know, that it's like a super low cost chipset or a little bit of hardware that can be in things, you know, that you might buy a new refrigerator where this is just built in and there's a screen on it, or you're going to buy a TV. It'll be built yeah. in. Obviously you'll have light switches in the wall or 
power ports in the wall. This stuff will just be built into that. The, the point is you want to get it around and you don't have to think like, oh, where's that thing I can talk to? You just, you're in your house and you just talk. I think, I think that happens. But, but the second thing that's happening and, and you see this and you, and you see this today, you see it, um, especially with the Amazon stuff, but you, you really Google's moving very quickly in this direction as well is just the, um, the programmability of it. You know, uh, Google just so updated the um, Google Home app, which is the app. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm distracted because my cat is Go ahead. lolling around on my desk and is probably going to knock over something in a moment. Let me just get that off the edge of the table there. <clears throat> Idiot. Um, she's ner- Sorry, we have guys in the house uh, working and uh, the cats get very nervous. So they come in here and they get all touchy-feely all of a sudden because they trust me for they some reason. They trust you and not them. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm going to protect her, you know. Actually, what I'm going to do is throw her out of my room in a second. Anyway, um, there is a, a kind of – programmability is the wrong word, but there is a – it's like the IFF – what do you call it? IFTTT thing or yeah, whatever yeah, that yeah. is. Or, yeah. um, if it – That stuff is it gets really powerful. So, for example – sorry, I, I'm getting distracted. But the, the Google Home app was just updated. And among the updates was, was this thing of like notions of let's, let's have an understanding of – what devices are in what room, and we know that they have different kinds of capabilities, right? So in my house, the two big, well, actually, there are three big device types are the devices you can talk to, which are like the Google Home type devices. There are the devices that can um, broadcast information from those devices, which are the Chromecast devices. And then there are live smart lights. And so we have three rooms of smart lights. Yeah. Those things are now all integrated into a single console in Google. You know, And you can do things with them together. Now, I don't do this right now. But you could um, you could do things like um, you basically are creating this kind of a it's like it's almost like a like a script or something where you're saying you you say good night to the Google thing and and then it does stuff all around your house or in one room and those things could include putting the shades down turning off the lights locking the doors uh, you know whatever it is like uh, turning on security monitoring equipment if that's what you have I mean. And, and, and I think that that stuff is truly, truly useful, especially when it just kind of works, you know, like right now, you right now what happens is this is why you don't use it. Cause right now it's just a little, it's something stupid. You walk in, you're like, Hey Google, what's the weather? Or you're like, Hey, um, you know, how far is it to, or like how many cups yeah. are in a whatever, or tell me a joke or it, it, give me the morning news flash or whatever it is. And like that stuff is casually interesting one or two times and then it's like yeah whatever that, that's not why you use it but i think that i think home automation which sounds horrible as a term it's just like a it sounds technical and terrible and being able to talk in a very plain english way to these devices and have it do multiple things at one time and have that be a thing that makes sense to you mm. is what's going to put this stuff over the top yeah it's um, it's i mean listen it's it, we're in a immature stage right we're yes. not at the level of what this is going to be. The, we don't know what the full potential will be right now because nobody's really doing it. It's uh, look, I, I, you know, you're, you're having people over for like a dinner party or something. And um, you could on your tablet or phone, you know, queue up music that would play to multiple speakers in your house or something. And that probably works fine. I mean, something like that, a lot of times, like what you want to do is set that thing up and just leave it alone. Like you're done, you know, um, and that's fine. And then I think, but for some people, the ability to just talk to the thing and have this exact same thing happen is efficient's the wrong word. It's not more efficient, but it's more natural. You know, it's something that anyone could do. Although I find that to be kind of ponderous because if you think through the sentence, I don't want to say it out loud because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to actually make that happen. But you can, you know, in my house, I could say something really ponderous like, Hey G play the whatever playlist from Google play music on the sunroom speakers and is it, a is a is a long sentence to kind of construct in your yeah. head, um, but if you could make it something simpler, which by the way you could, you could say, "Hey Jay, do that thing I told you to do, whatever it is." Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, you, gotta, one, yeah. you have to. No, then that's all you say because yeah. you've already programmed it to understand that when you say whatever that thing is, to do all that big thing that I just said. Yeah. Right, and and then it becomes natural, and that's the point. It's. It has to be it, – it, it can't read your mind, <laughs> you know, not yet. <laughs> but I'm sure Google's you, you planning You have to that. take a little bit of effort and take advantage of things as they happen. And the, and the issue is when you got the device, you could ask it the weather. Since you got the device and you're not using it, right, no one does. I mean I don't really use mine that much either. It, Google has added all this stuff to it. 
and you're not taking advantage of it because you can't. How does it even tell you that it does extra stuff? Yeah, it's you hard don't to know. get this. Yeah. It's hard to understand. You know, it is hard to understand, and I think that's that's the problem that we're in right now. You know, home automation. I think it's 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 great. By the way, I think I discovered my Wi-Fi problem. What's that? You know, but the the Wi-Fi oh, problem the, that I have, yeah, the non and mesh, how the only at night, problem. only at night. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I thought, I thought to myself, okay, I, I and I've been scanning the Wi-Fi, and I can't find, you know, like a like a neighbor's thing. I, I I just it's driving me nuts. And this morning, I had the lights on in my bedroom, and guess what? My Wi-Fi was not working again. And I thought huh. to myself, "Oh my God! Now I know what it is. It's my lights because they're wa they're wa they're um, they're LifeX lights. They're smart lights. So it's interfering with the Wi-Fi somehow. Oh. And it's not both of them. It's only one of the lights because I have two, you know, on the nightstand. So it's, do it, you think that's a placement?" thing with regards to wireless or do you think it's literally something i think i think it's a problem with the actual light bulb because oh, i cool. um i was if my wife's light is on it's okay if mine is on it doesn't it, it just kills my internet but that one i have a difficult time controlling it from the app it just right, it just right. disappears every now and then so i think it may it's doing something bizarre and I don't know what, so I'm going to contact them and see if I could exchange it for another one. But I think that's my Wi-Fi problem. After all these months, I think I figured it out where it's always at night. That's the only time. That's It's always at night. Just like a serial killer. It's always, it's always yeah. at night. Yeah. Um, what do you think this year's big Black Friday thing is going to be? Do you think it's going to be TVs again? Do you think it's going to be these? Yeah. We, we are in the middle of a, a, a whole scale switch over to 4k hdr televisions and um that's what should be on everyone's wish list if you don't have something like that and if you do have something like that the next thing you need is something to take advantage of it um you know we just got cable as you know we talked about that and one of the disappointing things with cable is that it's like hd at best you know Barely. and um yeah. a lot of the content of course you know it's cable so like a lot of the stuff you watch is like the 24 hour uh you know, crime channel or the 24 hour sitcoms from the nineties channel. And like these, this content is just garbage. It's like, it's just terrible looking, but even, you know, even modern stuff, you know, oftentimes doesn't look that great. A sports game, whatever. It's like, if you get used to 4k and you go down to like, you know, whatever it is, it's probably seven twenty P something terrible. Um, it's like, ugh, like it's just, it's a little disappointing. So Apple TV, 4k, obviously, um, Amazon has 4k has for a long time. Uh, uh, what do you call it? I almost said Netflix Roku does, you know, all the services, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon prime, all that stuff supports 4k. Um, the Apple people are particularly well situated because if you already bought content from them, it's auto upgraded to 4k. That's cool. Um, it's Listen, hard. It's just like the, it's just like the Xbox. You go, once you go and do this, you can't go back. Like it just, everything else looks terrible. It ruins you for, low res content you know well, well I, I think that that's the thing right you don't realize how bad it is until you go to a higher yeah. format and my argument a lot of people have been arguing and i did for a while saying okay listen from from standard def to 1080 there obvious there is a huge difference and everybody i mean most people will notice it is there that much of a difference between 4k and 1080 and you know yeah. for the longest time <laughs> You know what? I'll, t I'll tell you, I, I was still on the fence. And I said, you know, it depends on room size and how far you are from the TV yeah, yeah, and all this yeah. stuff. But now with HDR and how, even even just yeah. with the with the backlighting of these displays. Get a, uh, you know, an Xbox One X or an Xbox One S, by the way. Buy like the Planet Earth, you know, Blu-ray HDR thing they have and just sit back and watch your eyeballs explode. It's like it's it it just ruins everything I, I we probably talked about this at some point but i remember when we first got a 1080p set and uh, i used to watch hd net which was all just basically nature documentaries in in 1080p right which at the time was incredible and it was like getting new eyes you know and that's what 4k is like it's just amazing i still I, you know the only thing that is uh, the only thing that's really holding me back with the cable is really the frame rate yeah you know the frame rate yeah, is uh the frame rate is not all that great yeah yeah that's fair uh that that that's my that's my issue with it and for like especially with sports 
right? Especially with yep. sports, that would be that would be the thing that keeps me back. And I know a lot of people, but MLB's working on it. You know, they're doing. Have you ever um, have you ever watched Thursday Night Football on Amazon? Thursday night? No, I have not. How is it? I don't know. I'm going to try it tonight. So my wife is going to be out this evening, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I literally thought this. I this is so good. This is the mind of a man in a nutshell. It's like I, I'm thinking to myself, like I'm going to be home alone tonight. This is excellent. I think I'm going to watch the NFL on Amazon. <laughs> like what a goofy yeah. like. This is going to be my night. You know. Um, well, we'll see how good the quality is. I guess. Yeah, I'm going to see what that's like. Um, it'd be interesting if you could get a, you know. Uh, a 4K sporting event or something at 60 frames a I, second or something, know, somehow, somewhere, you know. Are they going to do the Super I mean, you know, the the thing is, when when is the Super Bowl in 4K at 60 frames a second? You know? When? Is that what, oh. yeah. Do they do, I mean, that'll be, but who's going to be able to support that right now? Yeah, I know. You well, know, who's going to be able to support, uh, other, than, other than on the internet? You, the cable companies I know, and then the entire internet's going to melt down because half the nerd population of the earth is trying to watch the Super Bowl over IP or whatever. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know. The, I mean, look at Verizon uh, with FiOS. They have yeah. all this. I mean, they have giant pipes, and they yep. can. They have yet to do anything with 4K. I know that they were starting to test it, but the networks sure. aren't going 4K right now in that level. I mean, they can technically, right? They could go. Well, though, see, this this is going to be a differentiator for them. I mean, as the the types of people that would get FiOS are the types of people who would buy a 4K display. They're the types of people who go back to FiOS and say, "Hello, I I need you to support this." You know. Um, it's the type of thing people will spend extra on. It's, you know, I'd rather than spending whatever the cost is 10 or 15 bucks a month to get HBO or Cinemax. I mean, how about 10 or 15 bucks a month and I can watch 4k, whatever the selection of shows is some, some sports thing, some, you know, whatever movie channel, whatever. Um, I'd love to have something like that. I mean, I'm looking, I just, I just did a quick search, right. For Verizon and 4k. And right now there's no announcement for 4k. They have started testing but yeah. really nothing that was in march yeah but it, you know what it's just, it's gonna happen it, it's um you know it's like when t-mobile comes out with some new pricing structure on one of their wireless plans and then all of a sudden at&t and verizon are tripping all over each other to copy it like once people understand that this is happening they're going to demand it and it's just going to spread the issues of it i really do think it's going to happen quick and, and back to your kind of original thing i if there are, well, I mean, obviously there are those people out there who have not upgraded to 4K. Um, this is the time. And I, I just went to Costco, for example, uh, because of the Xbox One X, um, I had a card in my giant, it's like a 55 inch TV into my office to do the 4K stuff on. What I wanted was something smaller I could put next to me here. And I was thinking maybe a 27, 32 inch, you know, eight, uh, 4K. That does not exist. I mean, yeah. it does actually exist. You can get a computer display, but um, like I went to Costco and it's like the smallest TV they had at Costco was 40 something, 48 yeah. inches. Or, I mean, they're pretty big. Like, and you can get them cheap. I mean, I, I think at least a few of them were under $500 um, and maybe significantly under. I don't even remember, but it, we're pretty much at the point where it's affordable, you know, and that everyone can get some range of choices at whatever price level they're comfortable with. I mean, I would frankly uh, advise people hold off on what 4K? Not, and not go super cheap and make sure you get, you know, HDR, I think is just as important as the 4k. Uh, make sure you're doing that as well. Let's see a 4k HDR on Amazon right now. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, here we go. TCL 49 inch 4k ultra HDR. <clears throat> TV, yep. uh, it is three fifty nine. Yeah, there you go. That's crazy. incredible, right? That's incredible. Yeah, and by the way, if that thing's terrible, who cares? Good news, you bought it at Amazon. They'll take it. They'll back. take it right B, back. Who cares? It was three hundred fifty dollars. If you get a year out of that thing, it's like, yeah. you know, this TV that I bought last year was probably it was twelve or thirteen hundred bucks. It's expensive, you know. It's yeah. I mean, it's awesome, but um, yeah, you it's it's gotten to the realm of affordability. Um, and for Xbox guys, you know, if you have an Xbox One S, um, you're going to get all the advantages of the entertainment stuff in 4K and HDR. And it's, it's kind of cool, too. Yeah, I have to tell you, I, I'm very surprised at one thing. Um, Vizio has really taken a seat back, right, over the last couple of years. They've kind yeah. of, they've kind of yeah. gone away as far as, you know, the, the, 
<clears throat> everybody yeah. was I mean, everybody was buying Vizios and I don't know anybody talking about it. And I know Amazon doesn't carry Vizio anymore. You know, it, it's um I don't know what the company, right? But it strikes me as like the the value jet of TVs. And maybe you could almost imagine a company like that just rebranding or whatever, like um, it's like, okay, the Vizio brand is kind of spent. Let's, uh, we're TCL now. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no one would know the difference. Cause honestly that those sets were fine. They always were. The Vizio stuff was good. The Vizio stuff was great. My, my, my favorite TV that I've ever bought is a Vizio and it looks great and it, it's phenomenal. The only problem I always had with them was that the audio was crappy. They have terrible, uh, yeah, audio. Yeah. So I had to buy the Vizio soundbar, which is perfectly yep. fine. Um, you know, we're in this very transitionary period when it comes to the way that we're consuming, uh, content um i'm still you know I, I don't know what the standard will be i don't know who the number one carrier will be you know right. youtube now I, i'm very interested to see how 2018 shapes out because youtube is about to announce their apps on fire tv roku and apple tv for youtube right. tv and yep. i have to tell you out of all the services that i've used the best quality for streaming television mm -hmm. uh, has been youtube has I mean yeah. I'm able to do 1080 I mean, on it. I'm able to do yep. 1080 on some channel. Let me see. So on Thanksgiving Day, um, I'm gonna I, I will have uh, football on two TVs. Uh, one of them will be on cable because that's what's there, and then the other one I'm going to use um, YouTube TV. Let me see if I can select this. So we'll right what, now, see how that goes. So <laughs> you know, MSNBC does 1080 1080p. Mm -hmm. That's my first option. Auto set at the 1080p. Okay. Um. Uh, you don't get that with cable. You can't watch this in 1080p on cable. I know. It's got it's got to be 720. It has to be 720. I mean, their UI is a little funky, but for the YouTube TV, but I'm sure on the TV they'll be fine. But this may be the the answer, you know? Yep. And yep. you could have it on multiple devices. So if you have multiple cable No, but that's the that's the beauty of it. Sorry to interrupt. I mean, no, no, go ahead. If if YouTube TV or anyone else starts supplying this stuff, it's the cable companies have to fight back, you know? Uh, they're going to have to change their offerings. And th that's the beauty of the, the competition that's occurring there. Like, I, I think we're going to see that happen. I think it's going to happen quick. Interesting. They also have on-demand programming on here. I did not know that. Did yeah. you know that on YouTube TV? Yeah, I was just playing with it last night, actually. In fact, I, I it's goofy to me that there are separate YouTube and YouTube TV apps. But from the YouTube TV app, you can actually browse, like, YouTube content and play it. You know, some of that is... Yeah. Basically the on demand stuff, yeah. Yeah, so right now I'll give an example. Um by the way, do you have that weird flash issue or or the <clears throat> HTML5 issue where it like flashes white every now and then? On like, I, I don't know on, why. I have this weird No on what? I'm sorry. On, like whenever you're watching like a HTML5 video on 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 on, on Chrome, in Chrome. I'm sorry. <laughs> you mean on YouTube? Uh, any no, anywhere. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have oh. to be YouTube. It just has to be HTML5. I, no, I don't, not that I. No. So this is interesting. I'm curious if their 10, 1080 quality <clears throat> is just upscaled. It's maybe not because I'm watching something that I know is not being broadcasted in 1080. <clears throat> right. So I wonder if they're doing a diff totally different stream. I mean, this looks great. This looks phenomenal. Really good. Interesting. All right. All right, Paul. We could wrap it up. Fun wow. discussion. Wow. Yeah. Why? You want to hang out? You want to? I want to go murder the person that's drilling my. It's okay. <laughs> it's my wall. Yeah, Please it's finish. Right. It's all right. Um, next week we'll do maybe on Tuesday. Let's try to work something out to do our Black Friday special on Tuesday. Maybe we okay. could drink. Maybe we could do something special for that. I have some some good some good ideas for Black Friday. Yeah, me too. I it was this. You know, we do it every year, but a lot of people were asking where we were going to do it, knowing that our schedule is a little different and we're doing shows on Thursdays now. So. I thought yep. it might be good to actually go ahead and do it. Uh, guys, go to our website, gfknetwork.com. You can subscribe to us. We're everywhere podcasts are available. I encourage you guys to subscribe to it. I want to thank our sponsors for supporting the show. Of course, all things Paul, go to therot.com. Go to therot.com. Sign up for the Therot Premium uh, service. You get access to all this new stuff. And you have a senior editor now, right? New guy. Yeah, uh, Mahedi uh, took over the news at the site. He's awesome. Very and cool. um, yeah, I'm really happy about that. Very, very cool. All right, guys, that's it for this week. We'll see you later.